do you want to play the game I suggested before? Mary Fuck Kill with fan bases. Welcome to Spinsters, where we run a platoon style of podcast. Hey there, it's me, True Weathers, three-time ham champ, notable hair haver. I have forsaken allegiance to all pro sports teams, but I am a college, University of Kentucky fan. And you can find me on Twitter, at Tyler I am. Uh, can we just talk about the Kentucky thing for a minute? Definitely. How did this start? I How went to Kentucky. Ve- you went to Kentucky? I went to University of Kentucky. You lived in Kentucky? Mm-hmm. Wow, I never knew this. Why'd you go to UK? Uh, they were paying, really. Oh, yeah. That was uh, the deciding factor. Uh, what is your favorite thing about Kentucky, the great state of Kentucky? <sighs> Good whiskey. If you take 10 seconds. Okay, I was going to count. If you take 10 seconds longer no, it, <laughs> to answer that. Well, I was just, it's not important what I was going to say. Good whiskey. That's my answer. Final answer. What about your least favorite thing? My least favorite thing? The weather. The weather is horrible there. Yeah, it's really weird. People don't understand that the joke here is like you can have, you'll have 80 degrees one day and the next day it's sleet. And then the day after that, it's like spring. Right. And then it happens. Yeah, it's it's weird. And then also we're in like a, I don't remember what the valley is called, but it's the worst for pollen, like in the yeah. country. It feels like it gets, you get like the worst of like every, and you get tornadoes, like as we just saw. They get like yeah. bad winters. They, it, mm-mm. The weather's by far the worst. Yeah, it's weird. Literally people have done scans of, I think it's lungs, but the pollen has like, leaves holes in people's lungs this might be that might be the wrong body part but it really affects people a lot (laughs) i mean i don't want pollen to leave a hole in anybody but to be honest yeah i'd rather it just be nowhere wow you went to uk all right what years i was there i graduated in 2010 calipari's first year was my last year i kind of passed the torch some are saying how do you (laughs) many (laughs) many Harry's saying it. Ain't it right, Harry? Uh, how do you feel about Coach Cal? I love him. Honestly. Like it's a thing, it's been this long. You you know what the strengths and weaknesses are. You look around and it's like who's giving you like a notable upgrade at both. And mm-hmm. honest, I'm more of an NBA fan than a college fan. So Getting to see these guys for the next 10 to 15 years of their career is much better for me as a Kentucky fan. And Cal definitely does that. So I'm I'm fine with Cal being there until he retires. Yeah, he's the kind of coach where if he's not your coach, you hate him. Like his quotes and metaphors mm-hmm. make no sense. And like the platoon year, he made this long metaphor about how they're a train <clears throat> and Something's the train station, and it had like no. He just be like talking, A plus man. B equals apple. Yeah, it had no like correlation to anything with the season. No, I will say that's pretty cool. I mean, you do get to watch them be like a pipeline to the sport you like to watch most. But for me, they've always been almost totally separate. Being a Louisville fan, no, um, that's, that's unfortunate, but also fair. Yeah, I mean it is, but they're not so much like we have Donovan, we had Gorgie, Terry. It's oh, not. For three. Jordan Nora, yeah. Do you say no, over like three? Yeah, no, but yeah. I, was, Terry's I like great, I like Terry. First of all, yeah. um, when we were talking earlier this year about the most handsome team, I think he's carrying the Hornets, but they are very handsome. They got a lot of hair on their team, man. Mm-hmm. As a hair haver myself, noted supporter yeah. of hair, yeah. As a hair haver myself, I said, "Hey, these guys are just like me." Um, PJ Washington's there, so I got to. Got a reason to watch a, a Kentucky baby boy there, but a lot of hair on that team. I like the Hornets. Um, they feel like they're the epitome of like no stress yet. Um, I guess we wanted to talk about the Rockets, which could be the same way. Like they're set up <laughs> to be the same way. No pressure, like have young guys, have guys who are just trying to figure it out, but are actually they're having the exact opposite. They're having the problems of a team that is like the stakes of the Lakers right now um, but yeah. falling short, but they're the Rockets. Like nobody expects anything from them. So they just should not be having this many issues. Yeah, it's like we're oh, 40-ish games in. Like the first 20 is like, 
Is there a coach that got signed that signed on to do a full rebuild? Is he going to get fired? And it's like, what? Then they I won feel like so three. Bad. It, then he won like three or four games in a row, and they're like, oh, okay, it's cool. And then he's it was let seven. He's, seven well, okay, games. Okay, no, no, you're right. They were cooking for a minute. Um, but it was weird. It was job. the kind where you're yeah. like, whatever, you have this fun. It's not going to last. I also think that was the beginning of the COVID stuff where people started getting out because of COVID. Right. I'm not saying that that was the reason, but actually, yeah, like, it, it, it sounds bad for me to say the beginning of the COVID stuff. Let me retract that. That was when the right. third wave started. That was season two. Uh, <laughs> that was season two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, Stephen Silas, yeah, does not deserve this. I feel bad for him. No. And now... I, I got to find out what exactly was said. Like, where is Shams on this? Because by all accounts, John Lucas is one of the, like, more respected, like, veteran coach. Ha- has been for, like, for decades since he played. Um, or I guess since he retired from playing, I should say. What did he say to where Christian Wood was just like, I'm not going back in. And Kevin Porter Jr. was like, I'm going home. Yeah. What okay. Did, let me give the recap possibly... real quick. Okay. I know because I actually I have some thoughts on that. So during ha- it was during halftime of the Rockets game against the Nuggets on Saturday, and like you said, John Lucas told Christian Wood and KPJ that they weren't giving it a lot of effort. That's all the report said was something about he was he noticed he you know he was unhappy with their effort. Both of them are notably like I'm saying from other people and myself very immature. Um, so I could see that also Christian Wood played like seven minutes in the first half, did not start cause he missed a COVID test and gave it absolutely nothing. They had like, like no was, points, no board, like no, no nothing. Yeah. I think one rebound and a foul. So yeah, he was, he was doing, and like three of the four shots he took were threes. So he just really wasn't trying. And in the locker room, the report said that Kevin Porter Jr. threw an object at John Lucas. So it wasn't even just words were exchanged and he had to be separated from him. And then he left the arena. That's tough. So, like, like if, guys, I need you to get back in transition defense. This is bullshit. He yeah, just goes I mean, home like that. That's the response. You throwing things at a man in his 60, 70 hours is John Lucas. I don't know. He's too old for that. And then also yeah. at the end of like all of the, I think it was, uh, it was probably Shams. I don't know. One of them said that they expected John Lucas to be like a mentor to rid KPJ of his anger management issues. Asking a lot. Respect, which is usually like, something yeah. that you get an anger management specialist was, to do. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. John Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing with, with Kevin Porter Jr. is he's like got a history of violence and like, I guess, quote unquote, misconduct. I don't I'm just doing quote unquote because they're always really vague with it. Like in 2019, he was the one who got suspended from USC. They said suspended indefinitely. And then it was like two games. Did they say what it was for, though? Never. I tried to look this morning okay. because the way that he denied it, like denied that he did anything wrong, made me feel mm. like it was violent. Um, and then also oh he punched a girl in the face in 2020 and knocked her against the fridge. So Jesus Christ, things are. Around. And he's also the one who had um, he was arrested on uh, gun charges. But I think it was just for having that. the gun. I don't think he did anything with it, but they found it because he'd rolled over in a car. And he crashed. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's when Cleveland traded him basically for nothing to the Rockets. But you, you know, remember when, that's when he got mad not, as a Cavalier? That's not true. It was, yes, but like they didn't even trade what? him after that. They were like, oh, we're just seeing what was going on. Like, oh, huh. did he hit a woman? I don't know. They traded <laughs> him because he got mad in the locker room again. That that's Torian. When Prince. they gave away his locker. Yes. That's Okay, that I was like, okay, that was the final. Sh- and in that, that one, he threw stuff throw. too. Okay. He threw food. So he's a thrower. Yeah. What is I, the yeah, I didn't know what's the yeah, worst that, player no that uh, a team would have to like replace your locker with for you to throw food at somebody? <sighs> Any of these replacement guys. Like if a replacement guy get like a second or third day, and it's like, bro, you bumped me at like for Isaiah Thomas? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, well, uh, I always have a little bit of pity for Isaiah Thomas. I'll hold it for Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. Some of them, it's like they're so happy. But that's the thing is that they moved his locker 
to the area where the young guys are and the guys who are like the very end of the bench. He didn't play. He wasn't playing that season. It was no. like January and he had not played because of uh, personal issues, which is not me not remembering. I just genuinely, they never said what was up. I know it, it was, he was posting some kind of like cryptic stuff on Instagram for a while. I don't know if that was while he was suspended or during the suspension, but I'd, I didn't know about a good number of those. It, if you're the Rockets, I don't know, at what point is it is it even worth seeing this through? Like what? He's I had know. some flashes this year, but he's not. Uh, it's not like oh man, no. Like this is the guy. Especially if he's uh, he just left left and went home. Just went home. Fully went home. I mean, That's you have to know if if the Cavs traded him to you for. Next, not like it was like a. Top it was like it was a fifty protected. Yeah, yeah, it was something in the fifties. Pick so second so round. So basically pick. nothing. Literally nothing. The I re, I do remember. I don't remember the exact number, but I do remember them saying that a Cavs trade. There they never traded for less ever in franchise history. I don't know. There were like can. seven rounds in the draft. There used to be like seven rounds, and they never <laughs> traded for this little a player ever. So like you're just gonna trade for him yeah, and, and think like, that you got it, man. Um, if that's you, the part I, yeah. If you're gonna ignore like all of, I mean, my tolerance for this stuff ends at the hitting the woman. Like that's sure. my, but I'm not a GM. But also, like, if you're going to look past that and say, like, you're saying, what are the contributions? Like that, even they can make this argument for keeping him. He's like a decent defender now, but okay. um, he like he did you watch against the Lakers? He he was on LeBron for a little bit. And he's pretty no. good at, yeah. It was just a little. It was not the entire time, and he's pretty good at like handling the guy who comes up the court. But hmm. what? Like that's you okay. know what I mean? Yeah, that's I like the whole time they were like, yeah, they've got this Jalen Green, Kevin Porter Jr. backcourt, and it's like those don't feel like two similar caliber assets, respectfully. Yeah, that those and, trajectories are very different. That's two yeah, kind it's of like that, timelines. Yeah, it's like that's kind of the point. So I. I get why Christian Wood is mad. Like Christian Wood is good. Like right now, he didn't sign up for. He signed up for James Harden, Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Well, so does Steven. Mike D'Antoni. So does Steven yeah. Silas. Yeah, he did. Yeah. But at he least did. I've been trying to get Christian Wood to the Warriors. Like I, I feel like he just needs to be somewhere. He's. I don't know. I think he's too good to be part of like just a rebuild. Like. Like, I love watching him. I really do. I think that he offers so much and he's like the he's one of the only players who can do everything he does but not be like fawned over. NBA fans mm. are so obsessed with somebody who's big, who can shoot, but can also finish right. inside and looks powerful, can switch on defense. Like that's mm. that's all you could want in a player in tw- in 20 Oh, in this NBA. In this yeah, NBA, exactly. Jeff Van Gundy. But, um Christian Wood is, I don't know, maybe it's just because of the Rockets. But also, you got to think something's up there. He was, he's been on six teams. A lot of teams. He was drafted. He wasn't drafted. He came into the league in 2015. Six teams in six years. Yeah, UNLV. I, I don't know if he was one and done or two and done, but he bounced around. And I feel like it was like at the end of every 10 years when he started cooking. And it's like, yeah. oh, there's something there. I think like the Pelicans cut him. Oh, there's something there. Somebody else cut him. He gets on with the Pistons, and they just, like the contract he signed with the Rockets, I was like, no. Why would you not match that? Why would Christian Wood not still be good with the Pistons? Like, what's drastically different about what the Rockets are doing than what the Pistons are doing? Um, maybe I don't they know got if there's something, something we don't know. I don't know. There's There might be. I think there's something we don't know about his it, personality because all the draft workouts yeah. i remember reading back on when he was like so like first really starting to be really good with the rockets and i was kind of like i don't know a little bit surprised he wasn't exactly on my radar i'll admit and i was reading a lot about him and his draft workouts like he showed up late to a bunch of shit he wasn't trying they said he was really immature so definitely the know. guy you want to have on a 10 and 30 16 or whatever they are now definitely yeah yeah, a I promising didn't... team with a seven win streak. But you know what? People go uh, to the Warriors and they get fixed up. That's what I'm saying. Like I at the or toward the beginning of the year, I was saying Wiseman for Wood. Now I don't even think it would take that much. Would you no. do that? Would you do Wiseman for Wood? 
If you're the Golden State, I I have a, I'm I'm. This is why I don't run a team. In addition to many other things, like I'm. I was gonna say this is horribly this is it, unqualified. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, nobody else 30. is. Um, nobody else. But I just feel a lot of like pity for James Wiseman, and so yeah. I don't think I'd trade him because I didn't. I wouldn't want him to get too down on himself. So I don't know. I'm kind of not oh, yeah, the best person yeah. to answer that question. Purely basketball that, yeah. wise, I think that the it would help the Warriors a lot more in the short term to have Christian Wood. I don't even think that's a crazy thing to say. Harry, what do you I, think? I, Harry's a Warriors fan. Yeah, talk to me, Harry. I at this point, I kind of feel like we're so far in on Wiseman that it's it's we just got I just need it's to been see a year and a half. I know, but <laughs> Christian Wood is like 26. It's not like Christian Wood's like 31. You can have Christian Wood this year, next year, and then he'd be like 28. Like, yeah. I feel like this helps now and in the future. I, I guess if the Warriors are, are committed to this kind of like, we're going to be good now, and then also we're going to be the mid 2000s Spurs where we're good in five years from now, then I do mm. like thinking about uh, Jordan Poole. Uh, Wiseman, Kaminga, Moody, like team that's just so good in 2030. Like, <laughs> be, it's fun to think about the Warriors riding out this core like the Spurs did. Right. I mean, obviously, the, then the Spurs once they couldn't hold on, like they really couldn't hold on. Right. I guess that's that was you know teed off by like Kawhi leaving and them not taking his injury seriously. But I wonder how but long the Warriors the could hold on. Like, or I guess who's the Kawhi? Yeah, like the young player who – that's, I think, yeah, who like they want Wiseman to be. Or, yeah. Right? Yeah. Or I mean, who? I, or who? <laughs> I, well, I, I I love what Kaminga's doing right now. I don't know if he's – yeah, I mean, Kaminga's he's not Kawhi, he's, but he is big and strong and seems to know where to be on the court. I mean, Kawhi wasn't Kawhi at first, so. I also think Kawhi. Christian Wood is like, what does he help us on defense? I, I, like, I don't know how – I guess he does make the Warriors, like, an even more lethal – offense but in a playoff series i don't think he hurt you on defense though right right yeah certainly next to draymond like i don't think he (laughs) i don't think he hurts you i think the warriors are always just looking i mean i don't think they're ever going to turn down a way to swap out what's happening in the center you know what i mean Mm. they always like because they that's just been the thing through the years they don't have many options down low so maybe that miles turner miles turner (laughs) Miles I just Turner like for I Wiseman. hate Miles Turner not as a person I'm sure he's lovely <laughs> all my homies hate Miles Turner every time I, yeah every time I watch him I'm just like uh like because I was you want to break up the Celtics right yes I was thinking about trades and like who okay. the other thing about the Celtics is when you have a team that you like something's wrong and everyone starts to talk about like well who could they trade there, start, there seems to be a consensus with fans and the people on the team. Then you know it's, you know, that's like pretty standard. Mm. And for Indiana, it's Miles Turner. And for the Lakers, obviously right now it's Russ. Like everyone wants Russ to go or thinks Russ should go. I don't. I think give it till okay. February. I've always been this way about Russ. Give it till February. Then talk to me. Um, but with the Celtics, it's like everyone is that guy. Like they, their right. their obvious person to trade is almost everyone. Right, anybody but Tatum. Um, yeah, anybody but Tatum. That's true. I wait to what? I thought you can trade Miles Turner to the Celtics. No, I decided not to. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm trying to trade him to the Warriors. Uh, would you do Wiseman for Miles Turner? Here. That's pretty. That definitely helps your defense. <laughs> And that's yeah. not really and arguable, though. Like that, there's no way that that's what the Pacers would take on. Uh, Wiseman? Are well, you going to do a lot better? Than, are they, you, they... you going to do a lot better than that? Like a number two? They don't tank, so are, are, they're not going to do a lot better than a number two pick. Yeah, I love them saying we don't two. tank. I'm like, you're not. Yeah, yeah but thanks. <laughs> he's like, we, know. We, we would never do that to our fans. We would never lose on purpose. What are you doing right no. now? <laughs> Yeah, no, we're losing trying. not on purpose. Yeah, no, we're the 13th seed with pride. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't think they're gonna do a whole lot better than Wiseman. Maybe the honestly. wise, maybe Wiseman Miles Turner would be a lot for them, like Depot, um, Paul George. Yeah, it's like I feel like both sides could like 
Do Wiseman and Sabonis work together? I don't know, but we know Turner and Sabonis. It's just not working. Yeah. So yeah. what's the be- what's the best pick or blue chip player you can get? The number two pick from last year getting healthy? I don't think you can do a whole lot better. The Pacers are just having a terrible time, and I feel and I feel bad. Who could have seen this it. coming? Yeah, Who seen I know. This coming? You know what though? They really tried. Like they are like a they're like the fifty seven year old couple who finally gets divorced. You know what I mean? Because they tried so hard and long, and they traded people, and then it was just like every season they had the craziest injuries, and now this year that's like transformed <laughs> into COVID. But they tried like they really tried to push through, and it just has never worked. I feel like they. George. Not even divorce. I feel like they keep like swapping like small things. Like they uh they adopted a dog. That didn't work. They're still unhappy. They uh start taking some vacations. They're still yeah. unhappy. Like that was like Nate McMillan to Bjorkgren. Bjorkgren, that was a failure. They opened Rick the Carlisle. Marriage. Give me give me a break. Wait, where where do you stand on Rick Carlisle? I think that he is the Right. Well, that move, I guess, more than him is the epitome of like, we just this is a club and we don't let anybody else in. We're just going to recycle these guys till they die. 100 percent. He took that job because I think he was about to get fired or or they wouldn't read. They wouldn't commit to a new contract. So he knew I broke the news that that. he he Mm. was let go. I remember that very well. It was per Haley. I said it it was right there on the screen. (laughs) Yeah, I broke the Uh, news. And he immediately jumped to the pay who don't. No, like it's time to blow it. You don't, you don't have to tank if you don't want to. You're just gonna suck. Like, is that what you want? Like you said, is that what you prefer? Yeah, it's weird. And with Rick Carlisle too, I just so many coaching hires confuse me. But this one especially did because his last job, everyone said they disagree. He disagrees with the players. Dick. Yeah, yeah, he's a dick. And you can only pull that off with the right players, and for so long, this kind of like Jordan and I talk about this a lot. The like I'm a college coach, so I'm gonna be your like dad figure, and you're right. gonna, you know, like very like SEC football, military, yeah, yeah, and it's all kind of, it's a bit weird, and it's like I'm in charge, you're not in charge in the NBA, so <laughs> at a certain point, you get like a Luka Doncic, and he's not gonna listen to you, he's gonna make so he's gonna make like fifty times what you make like in two years. That was bad math, but yeah, why would no, he listen I think to it, you? It might. Well, even Actually, then, it's like right. what. He hadn't been out the first round since they won the championship. Yeah. And I've heard this man be referred to like this year as like, well, he's clearly a top five coach. I'm like, hey, what? Like name Rick? Maybe. Um, so I don't know what the Pacers are doing with him. They're, they have, I feel like had a lot of injuries. Them's the breaks. Like, I, I don't know what to tell Like you still, you're running him up for like four straight years. Unless they're trading Sabonis, which I'd, I'd, I'd keep him. Everybody else could go. Levert could go. Brogdon. I don't think TJ Warren is a real thing anymore. Like I don't nobody's no. seen TJ Warren like since the bubble. He seems like one um, of those guys who will just randomly come up every like two it, years and have like an amazing stint. It's time with to get paid. Team. Yeah, for like <laughs> three weeks and yeah, that that's TJ Warren. But not he's not a gonna he shouldn't be a part of this team going forward. No. Or he should be as you wait and find out what you can collect for the future. Because, yeah, like, the, I, if they're willing to sell everything, they have. Like, Miles Turner can help. You could get something for Miles Turner. You could get something for Brock when he's eligible to be traded. Levert, um, like, Jeremy Lamb. Like, even if it's not much, like, just completely tank because they stink regardless. Yeah. I can't imagine Rick Carlisle finishes this contract with the Pacers. How long is it? Do you know? Uh too long. Yeah. I don't. Well, maybe they don't. They don't. Maybe they don't fire coach. No, they just they just fired McMillan and Bjorkman. He, yeah, he's not finishing this contract with the Pacers. It's another year spinning your wheels. Yeah, that's a weird front office. I, I'm ready to take it over when they're ready to hit my line. Really? I'll do it. Yeah. You go up to Indiana. Will you break that news? Then yeah, I'm ready to take. The, I'm. <laughs> That I'm with, uh, ready and willing to take the Pacers job. I must work remote. Um, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I need 100% personnel control. I think it'll be great. Harry says that Rick Carla has four, four is on year. a four year, 29 million. Oh, not he'll be by deal. year. He don't. 
He'll be out by year three. Yeah, Herb is weird. Their owner's weird. He's like very, he's like, we're win now. We're, and I'm like. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, my dog is Big barking Herb at the word Herb Simon. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, she's on we're edge. We're talking about it's a small market. And when you can't tank in a small market, it's how you lose the attendance. How you go from 23rd to 28th. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Even like the mid-tier markets, it's it's tough. But I mean, that's the thing is like, just give your fans who are loyal to you something to look forward to. I think taking is great because the reality mm-hmm. of it is when you are already bad, then you're pushing, you're showing forward movement. You know, yeah. we've seen how this has worked. There's so many examples of this working now. Whereas like to go back to the Celtics, that's such a different deal. They really can't start over, but they're also they're doing the same things the Pacers did, like teensy, teensy, twi- like tiny tweaks. Yeah. And for what? Like it hasn't worked out. Now Brad Stevens is in charge and he thinks that this is what confuses me. Coaches have huge egos. Sure. And you're telling me that a guy who is now the GM or president, or whichever he is, is admitting to himself he's like oh if i couldn't do it you know this guy sure can that doesn't make any sense like coaches have huge egos there's no way he thinks that not this Dad team Steven. is actually going to work he's different not that yeah Steven. he made it different i i don't know they ns freedom is there like they just got a lot going on but it's like the same core i don't like marcus smart jason jalen Horford's been in and out, but he's been there. Like, Robert Williams has been there a few years now. And it's like, we just got to keep tweaking around these top six. And it's like, uh, maybe it's within the top six. Yeah. Like, I like, I, Lonzo would have been perfect. I don't know why more people didn't go for Lonzo. Maybe it's because tampering, literal tampering, and they knew it was a done deal. But Lonzo would have been perfect for the Celtics. Like, Marcus yeah. Smart can help, can help teams. I just don't, I feel like that's kind of ran its, course when robert williams is like your main thing to look forward to in the future and, he's, and i'm not even a, shitting he's a, on him he's a fine yeah he's a fine i'm not player. i'm just saying that's why you know man, what i mean it's time to it's time to send Jalen brown home that's what everybody is saying where where's he from atlanta oh did you watch Jaylen the game brown. last night the hawks i game? the hawk uh, yeah that was disgusting it was yeah Hundred give her hundred and thirty five points to a no Dame, no CJ Portland. It was very nasty. Um, well, there's another comparison to the Celtics. I fear that they're gonna be like the Jays are gonna be Dame and CJ. How many years in are we gonna go before that's what we find out? You know what I mean? That they are just this unit that is like too good. Like, holy shit, we stumbled on these two together. And so we're going to keep them together and build around them. But you really can't. You just don't have the savvy or the facilities or, you know what I mean, to do that. Yeah. I, and even then, like, I, I'd i still keep changing stuff around those two if I was Boston. But if I'm at, I don't know if you heard Travis Schlink, the uh, GM or president, whatever, of the Hawks today was – Dropping some heavy hint. He was like, hey, maybe this team isn't who I thought it was. Did like, he I say thought, that? I didn't yeah, see that. Like he, it was like oh, maybe an hour ago. Uh, an hour ago. It was pretty, some like radio interview. And it's like, we have certain expectations. Like we're just not even competing on defense. Like he didn't tell a single lie, but it was very harsh in terms of like, hey, we're looking like a lottery team. Maybe we're a lottery team. Maybe we do need to, maybe this season is not, for us, so GMs love radio interviews. Like they love releasing these huge bombs on. Danny H used to do it all the time. Like I'd have to look for the sources, and it'd be like one hundred five point seven. The cat, yeah. The cat, uh, yeah. Like something weird. <laughs> Lucky, like something. It was just always well, weird. I don't I know. I guess you, I feel like it's a very like the audience they want is. Like all over that, they're like, "Oh man, he, uh, tra- he's gonna trade. He might trade Trey Young." Uh, and that's that's exactly what Schlink wants. Yeah. Um, wait, is this the link? Is this it? I don't know. I tried to click on it, and it's almost gonna shut down my Zoom. So I'm just gonna hide this oh, little. No. It says Travis Schlink made some very interesting comments on <laughs> on nine two nine the game. 
this morning. Maybe I need to lower my expectations for this team. Ultimately, all of this falls on my shoulders. I put this group together and they're not responding. So we need to take a deep look into this. We're seeing the same thing every game. Again, last night we had the lead going to the fourth quarter. Then we can't keep it. I sound like a broken record, but it's the same thing every game. Obviously, you can tell I'm a little frustrated. So he was, he gave 929 the game, stern talking to. Yeah, the exclusive on his anger. So I don't know what they do. Whenever they're they're ready. uh, What do you think is the best thing that they can do to change up? Besides trade Jalen Brown to the Hawks? Yeah, if they can't get Jalen. I guess that, that counts. For me, for young teams, I'm like, just relax. Give it some time, you know? Like, maybe this yeah. is honestly, maybe he is, and he's just because they know who listens to these, like you said, they know mm. who they're reaching. So maybe he's just doing the Rick Patino, like, I'm mad in a press conference thing. Right. I know you get that reference, unfortunately. Definitely. Like, you know, he's just posturing a little bit to, right. to insinuate that this isn't okay. But in all honesty, like, it kind of is okay. How old is Trey Young? Uh, 23. What's the average the age of that team? Of like, they're. They're okay. I, I, it's you know. I really I uh, I came here. I was ready to talk about how they're not that far off, and then they gave up 136 goddamn points uh, to the Trailblazers. But even then, like Okongwu just came back. He's good at defense. DeAndre Hunter, I th- like early December it was like he's two or three weeks away. So I imagine mm-hmm. he's close. He's good at defense. Those two alone help you. They, I mean, like everybody, they've been hit with coaches, everything. I think their top two coaches are out now. Um, yeah, along with like eight or thing. nine, so it's like, and even then, I think they're three, three and a half games from the six seat. Like, I don't think it's, it's, it's not, not that good dire. now. Yeah, so I, I agree. I think it's definitely some. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll trade everybody. Okay, I'll yeah, don't exactly. don't don't try me. I'll trade them. But I don't. Yeah, I just don't think they're that far off. The other thing is like, if you're gonna give up, if your flaw of your team while you're saying two defensive. Uh, like aides are out. If your major flaw to your team is like giving up a lot of points, that that's what's embarrassing you. You just are going to have to accept that. You have Trey Young. You know what I mean? Like that's just yeah. something you're going to have to accept. He's not going to help you there with somebody who you literally can't take off the court is not going to be able to help. So Yeah. But even then last year, like the Nate McMillan, like once Nate McMillan took over, I think it was a thing where they defended it like the, I don't like the 13th best rating it's like oh when you're gonna score like that that's plenty good like you said with trey young it's, it's only so high you're probably gonna get but they're like 26 27 that yeah that's not all trey young yeah no it's no it's definitely not but he's somebody what i guess what i'm saying is you kind of have to be at full strength to minimize something sure. like that you know what i mean and it's not definitely. like they can't figure it out like look at the warriors for the last however many years um yeah. with the exception of two years ago but yeah, you just it's something where you're going to have to overpower it so much that it is a strong unit despite having to hide someone all the time. Yeah. I, like this team is built so specifically which like every position can or has like the length to cover up for that. So when it starts breaking down and you're playing a lot of Delon Wright, Lou Will m- minutes, I saw him with my own two eyes. It's ugly. It's, it's bad out there. So <laughs> I mean, every team can say that getting healthy, but this team in particular, because again, the East, like that kind of glut after like four to what, 11 or 12. I haven't checked in a while. Let me look. It's like wide. Like even still, I think the Hawks are like three and a half games out of the six seed. Like it's, I just don't think they're far enough out to be blowing things up. So I looked, I I think I I looked like two days ago in the, because I'm trying to decide if I want to drive up to Chicago. The, do Nets it. are playing the Bulls, and then the Warriors are playing the Bulls, like oh, two days apart. Oh, but they're so expensive it. again. Like they're, it's really expensive. If you're listening to this, <clears throat> that's all. Just I'm just saying. saying. My Venmo is at Haley O something, and I think yeah, you just go to those games. Don't ask anything on me. I was thinking. I literally was thinking. Maybe I'll go to the one I want to go to more. And then the half the money I would have spent on the other one, I'm going to put on Steph to win MVP. Well, I'm going to split it between Steph for MVP and the far, far, far outside chance that I don't know. I just have a feeling about because media loves a narrative for DeMar. 
Ooh. I saw this thing today that people were talking about him for most improved. Like, they would never do that. Oh, yeah. So the odds right now are like plus 130 for Steph. Okay. Plus, uh, I keep wanting to say 6,500. And the other day I fucked up and said 65,000. So I just am like taking real time <sighs> checks. Because one of those is way more exciting than yeah, the other. Yeah, I was going to say, who, who's 65,000? Uh, yeah, 6,500. Isaiah Thomas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, poor Isaiah. I feel for him. No, um, obviously, I think Steph will win it. But I just, I I don't know. The thing is, is media people can be so irrational and so swayed. Yeah, people suck. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they do. They do I think suck. it's... I don't hate. Yeah, I was just saying. Like, I don't know what Steph shot last night, but I did. Like, of the last what four games, he shot twenty seven of seventy eight, and they beat three playoff teams. Demar Derozan can't do that. Like, he's not afforded that. If he shoots that, they're gonna lose. Like, if he or, or Levine, oh, one hundred percent. So, so as it's a, like as his, players, it's yeah. it's no contest. No, as players, it's no contest. As a gambler who's looking for an opportunity and Definitely. knows the weaknesses of the people who are deciding this. I just feel like it could be there. I mean, the more like, what was it? Like three historic finishes. I say historic. I mean, like they felt like it. It was so exciting. Mm. I don't mean like statistically. I don't know. In the last like two weeks, the last uh, week. Yeah. DeMar's been so fun. I don't miss a Bulls game, you know? So that's kind of a, I'm I like in every the, other with Warriors game. Sorry, Harry. The two straight like game winners with threes, and those are the only threes he hit either game. It's just, wow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's – the narrative play is interesting because I don't know what it would take, though. Like I think it, Steph might have to miss a couple games. But I was going to say, you'd have to Giannis be Giannis will be there. I think Jokic should be mentioned higher. I don't know how – 100%, like, always. They just I, don't – I don't know where they're at in the playoff seating right now, but it's entirely because of him. And it's like, we can't give it to a seven seed. It's like three games are going to separate the four and the set. Like, we're doing over that's, that when he's he's better at every literally everything than last year. That's the and Russell just, Westbrook, though. Like, they won't give it oof. to someone who's carrying the team and is the team's not in the like top <laughs> three finish. They just won't do it. It's not good for the narrative. Yeah, they like that's the thing is his was based entirely on the narrative. Like that was the post KD season. Mm. Yeah, this is where not the, gonna happen again. Where the the Anna, where are the nerds at? Like if Jokic is just crushing all the numbers from last year, like they should be beating this. Doesn't that wouldn't that overwhelm with Steph or like Giannis is in there for sure? KD, um, like I'm not sure why KD. Like it does feel like Steph has the favorite now, and I'm not. Sure, why? Because what what has yeah. KD done that Steph hasn't done? I guess that's two seed now, so there's that. But. I mean the the I think the Warriors like this all happening uh, without Clay is a big deal, and kind of without much else that's super significant. I don't mean that as a dig to the rest of their players. I just sure. mean that um, maybe comparatively to like other teams in the top. Th- well, I want to say three. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, Warriors on Jazz. Yeah, and then the top three, like, let me look at the East. They don't really have a one and two. Um, I th- they don't have are... a traditional one and two, but Draymond's going to okay, make the so all-star like... team. He's going to be the defensive pro- If Draymond's your number two and you're the number one team in the NBA, you should be the MVP. Nothing Good against point. Draymond, yeah. but, like. Yeah, who is their new? I guess it's Wick. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, is that, yeah, it's Jordan no, Poole. Like, no, it's definitely Steph. Uh, like I was saying, I think Steph is a lot. Uh, anyway, so I'm just not nasty. sure. Maybe I'll go to those games. I'm trying to decide. I think you should go to those games. Here, if you okay. went to those games, you would not regret going. But if you did not go, you might regret going. It's like $300 to get out of the upper, upper, upper bowl. You're going to make $300 again in your lifetime. <laughs> oh yeah maybe i don't know are, the, it's just, are, the, life's been, bull, are these teams gonna be so this good expensive again? lately that's what i'm it, no that's yeah. actually what i'm saying because i could see them black back to back i wouldn't even have to leave chicago and that's i get rare. to see damar and who knows if 
this is I feel like I'm saying a lot of things that are appearing like they're digs, but they're not. Who knows if he's when he's going to do this again? I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean when yeah, no, this is amazing. You want to go see it. Yeah, he's playing. Like he's doing special shit right now. The Bulls have not been like relevant in years and they're number one in the East. That does not happen. I think you should go to both games. I just want to send a special message out there to the woman who sent me a Venmo for $500 one time and the the line was just for being you. Oh, wow. I don't know who the fuck you were or where you came from, but I could really use it right now where, where to is fulfill she my dream. I know. Um, hello, young lady. <laughs> for being you. So anyway, I would just really appreciate it if we could just repeat that. That would be sick. Make it like one of those Amazon things where it's a you press the button. If and you... It just, automatically reorders if you posted if you tweeted your Venmo and why you wanted it you would i know i know on, like, but sometimes, and sometimes you really i really want, think uh, about it are you a hooper or are you a baller like is, i don't i can't tell if your heart's in the game oh i know it's just like at what point like do you ever know you should do something on twitter or know that it would benefit you so much but you're just so embarrassed you know what i mean like you're just like i want to do this but i feel like i have some shame left like do you know what i mean absolutely and i would counter with if you're still on twitter you don't have any shame left yeah that's true do you do ads on your twitter you have, you have a lot of followers i do i do i did and would do ads yeah he can be bought ladies and gentlemen i'm just saying <laughs> yeah if you post it you have court size seats for like both games like that's the thing, though, is that does it come with the stipulation of having to go with somebody? I don't think it would. Yeah. I, I prefer think, going. Well, if they send it to your Venmo, it's, it's your money. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. If it's Venmo, if it's not directly, like, tickets are Yeah, bought. if they're not sending you, like, yeah, here's two tickets, like, no, 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 no. Um, I'm just saying. You know what? This is going to be the Nets game is going to be like one of the first ones that Kyrie plays in, too. Oh, come on. I know. And everyone will be back. (laughs) You have. I think you have to go to this game. Okay. Do you want to play the game I suggested before? Mary fuck kill with fan bases. Let's do it. So long story short, I tweeted the other. Well, before even that happened, I was watching a Hornets game. The other day and I just noticed like a string of the most beautiful women I've ever seen Um, and it surprised me not that I expect like Hornets fans to be well no I actually I didn't expect I didn't expect them to be like so gorgeous like there were literally 10 of them in a row Um, not even friends like separate groups because you know pretty people like random smatterings yeah all across the arena. And so I was thinking about the hottest fan bases. Okay. Which is kind of leading to this. So we'll play this game. I'll throw you a softball first. Okay. So some pleasant choices. Atlanta, Miami, LA. Clip, not the Clippers, the Lakers. <laughs> no I was going to say that. I was going to ask which one because those are two yeah. very different. Uh, Atlanta, what's the second one? Miami. Fuck Miami, marry Atlanta, kill LA. That's a wild life you're in for. I live a wild life. Yeah, that is a wild life you're in for. Okay, uh, how about yeah. uh, Washington's just too easy. I like how that. about Detroit? Well, let me say the actual, and I mean, obviously we're talking about the cities, but let me just mm-hmm. say the actual team so it doesn't sound as. Okay. Audacious. All right. Pacers, Pistons, Bucks. Kill Pacers. No disrespect. Yeah, um, yeah. Right, <laughs> right as you accept the GM job. No. This is brutal. Listen, I told you, it's all remote. Um, <laughs> d- no disrespect. Um, who does it? Milwaukee or Bucks and Pistons. Fuck Detroit. Mary Milwaukee. Detroit, Detroit has beautiful people. Beautiful. Yeah, they don't get appreciated for that. I'm all, like my hesitation there. I was like, if I don't marry Detroit, they also got some women that would cut my throat. Yeah. I might like that, so that's why I, I, that was just the thought <laughs> process. Okay, uh, Portland. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, I can't group. That's just not fair. <laughs> I forgot about Houston. I'm not going to put Houston in this one. Um, nah. Portland, San Antonio, or <laughs> Memphis. Oh, Mary Memphis. Yeah. That's easy. The only thing I know about San Antonio women is what Charles Barkley said. You want to so, repeat what he said? He said, this is what Charles Barkley said. I've never been to San Antonio. He said they got some big old women. Mm-hmm. I don't know any. I haven't heard anything about the Portland women. So, kill Portland. Probably Fuck San Antonio. Why? Yeah, I don't know much about yeah, I've so never been I, to Portland either. Yeah. Wait, so what did you say? Who did you marry? I married, married Memphis. Fuck San Antonio. Kill Portland. Okay. All right, let's play one more. Okay. Um, are we going to say Golden State is San Francisco or Oakland? Or the 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 two? The, the Bay. I feel like the Bay is a fair. Okay, let's do the Bay. Okay. So then Warriors, oh. Houston, the Rockets. Oh. Okay. I know. Chicago. <laughs> I don't know if I know where it's going. Um, okay, kill Chicago. Wow! Right after Fuck you told Houston. me to go, like what? <laughs> Mixed messaging. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Uh, <laughs> marry the Bay. Marry the yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I was looking through to see if there are any cities that I missed that are extremely notable and i feel like washington never gets enough credit and uh Washington's also kind of attractive people yeah toronto i think dallas dallas has a lot really of attra- dallas i would i don't know if they're a sleeper but i would say dallas okay i have i just have never been to texas really i know None everyone of was it? very shocked yeah i've never been to texas it doesn't make sense i love barbecue I'm from Kentucky. Like, like it's it just like those two things alone. Okay, don't go to yeah. Chicago. Go to te- now. Go to Chicago, and then yeah. at some point, <laughs> at some point, no, nah, Texas is Texas is worth going to. Yeah, I really want to go to Houston. I want to. There's like a a barbecue tour. Mm. Have you? Did you do the um, Bourbon Trail while you were here? I did not. I've I've never done it. I want to. That's funny because you said you love whiskey. Harry, the bourbon trail is like you go to all the distilleries. You have to get a drive, like someone to drive you around. And you go to all the distilleries and sample them. But you have to like go through the countryside and it's so green. It's beautiful and you're drunk. And I then there's the urban I didn't really bourbon. like bourbon till like after. I didn't appreciate it till later. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I think that's normal. I think, you know, ta- you have they, to like burn off some taste buds. Yeah. If, I, if you really had be like cheap this beer. Is, tour yeah when i was like a senior in college yeah. i would have been <laughs> all over it here yeah um if you just go to louisville by the way there's an urban bourbon you can just do the ones that are in the city of louisville i'll never go to louisville no nah, wow no nah, i got family in louisville i might go to louisville you know what like the thing is louisville is half uk fans anyway it that's facts it is it's just it's a 50 50 split smart blunt. you have family here i do Wow. I feel like I misjudged you. Wow. You have to be good people if there's. <laughs> Wait, you I was thought like, I was horrible? A, I, or you thought I was. I was like, he was an out of town <laughs> Kentucky fan. Like, this guy. You know what I mean? It's very much no, like I'm a Yankees fan and a Cowboys fan and a UK fan. I, I think that's fair. Um, but I would you went argue, to Kentucky. Yeah. I would also argue we haven't had enough success. I mean, like, in my lifetime, we had, but if we're talking like. All t- I don't I don't count the Kentucky titles uh, when black people couldn't play because I yeah I didn't well you know also there's a period out. where like the NIT is just ignored as like th- that yeah, used that to be the, the better thing. tournament yeah. yeah exactly so that's that's also a thing but no that's that's uh well that's fair enough so wait when you were there who was playing I 2006 2000 to 2010 right I think I got. I get all no okay. I got one year the last year of Tubby, I believe. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you I see got, that he they just I had got, like a 
Yeah, uh, they retired his jersey. It was really dope. Finally. Uh, like, they were yeah. so mean to him when he was there. They were so mean he, to him. It was. And then I was there for the Billy Gillespie era, which if you didn't appreciate Tubby during the Gillespie era. And then my last year was the first Cal year. So three coaches. Yeah. Not good times, but. It Gillespie good times. was like our Cragthorpe. No, vice versa. <laughs> Our our Gillespie was was, our, was Craig Thorpe. Yeah, Satterfield Terrible. might be. Uh, I don't want. Let's just not. It. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to talk about him. I don't want to talk about Chris Mack. I just think he's anemic. <laughs> like I just hope he's him getting too. enough iron. I'm serious. I'm worried about him every time I watch a game. <laughs> there's no blood in his face. He doesn't look well. No, um, he looks so unwell. So anyway, Patino had that too. You got to wonder if it's Louisville at this point. Patino, first of all, Patino was just old, <laughs> and he wore those white suits. It washed him out. It wasn't his fault. You know what I mean? He just got washed out, but it's just the color. He's picked the wrong colors to wear. You think he still got that tattoo for the title that doesn't exist? Yeah. So I actually had dinner with him not too long ago. At Porcini? And he... Oh. <laughs> Listen, it's a great restaurant. I love, look, I love Porcini. I'm, li- I'm not telling this story anymore. <laughs> no, no, not, no, no. I have a great story, and I'm not no. telling it anymore. Harry, edit that out, please. I, w- I would love. It was. Uh, where, were, where were you eating it? <laughs> it was this place in L.A. Harry, you can keep that in. The thing is, is look, they took away the title. You can take away anything else. I won't. It can't hurt me. You know what I mean? Take away my pride, my story. Does it hurt me? Um. We were eating at this restaurant in L.A. Uh, this guy I used to work with, John Gonzalez, invited me because he did a story on him in Greece. And uh, we were eating dinner and Patino's friends with Pitbull. Like, you guys know this about him? They're like, <laughs> duh. Everyone. Yeah, okay. Look at Harry. I had to tell Harry. You don't understand. Like, Harry is, why, lives why in Brooklyn. Why so, Patino friends with Pitbull? <laughs> um, they live on, like, the same island in miami or something i don't know they live like next to each other in miami so i guess i can't tell half of the story because it's a bit rude to one of them you don't have to tell us which side is rude to you say one of the parties you'll be able to tell um Okay, I'll just I'll I'll tell it and omit a couple details. So he gives Pipple has this like rose that he makes, and he they're in this like room in a restaurant, and they just keep like pouring it and pouring it and pouring it and pouring it and pouring it. And so Patina was like, "Wow, thank you so much for you know this rose that you made." And then the next day, um, Pipple shows up to his house with like crates of it, like wow. just crates of it and is like they're talking in his backyard and he starts playing he's like can i play music and he was like sure and pitbull starts playing his own music (laughs) (laughs) wait at rick patino's house at rick patino's house blows out rick patino's speakers and it's like (laughs) the next day comes back with enormous like concert speakers and it's like here you go good good vibes (laughs) yeah he's he's, he's a good friend good vibes pitbull yeah. How how was how was Patino? Like what, just your impressions. I think he's well. Yeah, this was actually like kind of soon <laughs> it's a, after the It's a good way to describe somebody yeah. like well or unwell. I mean, we honestly we didn't really talk about Louisville that much. So, I think he's fine. I think he's I doing can see how it wouldn't well. come up. He's yeah, he's um he's actually seems like he's has some of the old spirit back coaching now. Like have you noticed this? Mm-hmm. Is it what, when, Iona? Yeah. yeah, when uh was it Louisville canceled? Like what? I think Louisville canceled the game with UK because of COVID. Yeah. Oh, he was he was trying to jump in there. He was like, "I'll play you guys. We can fly." Honestly, I hope that I hope to God they don't reschedule that game. I'm just tired. You know what I mean? It's been tough. Yeah. Yes. Y'all y'all don't want it this year. No, I know. No, I know yeah. Trust me. Mm. Football's enough. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, man. You remember when Will Levis scored four touchdowns against Louisville? Anyway, um, Tyler, thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I was going to see if you have any stories that would possibly be indicting and cut you off from future dinners with Rick Pitino, but 
<sighs> or just so, or coach cow i really want a cow story because he actually is wild like people don't understand this who just know like him as the coach, as someone who like produces NBA talent, but he actually is is like not wild. I don't want to say wild in the same way mm. that like maybe another college coach could be perceived as wild who came out of the state of Kentucky, but he is definitely like does weird things. Yeah, I, like that's kind of part when you were. Harry is just. <laughs> I don't think it'll make sense to people who don't like college sports at all. But like your college coach is like he's playing a role. There's just a lot that comes with it. He, like he, he got re- he got a recruit. He got a coach. He got like Cal still does the. I don't know if he does it now for COVID, but he does the thing like goes to the old diner every morning at six a.m. to have coffee with the old regulars. Like shit. Like you have to do all that stuff. That's all part of the role. Yeah. And. I don't. Know, I, could, <laughs> I just know pretty much for a fact Billy Gillespie used to get drunk and like run through the fountains in downtown Lexington, like that. He was really. You talk about wild boy. Um, yeah, you just get like a text. Yeah, Gillespie's on that shit again. Like a wild. Have you heard boy. the stories about um, Howard Schnellenberger? Mm-mm. May oh, he rest boy. in peace. Oop, my camera got blurry. That was the ghost well, of Schnellenberger. Maybe I'll just be blurry. Oh, there we go. Um, just same same thing. He was just drunk a lot. Yeah. I mean, have you ever seen the picture of him hosting up the trophy? Like that man was drunk. Uh, that, I feel <laughs> like they were. I don't know when the switch flipped, but it definitely like coaches and players still. I mean, used to definitely. Get drunk like before and yeah, they used at to get games. drunk like yeah. yeah, like not a beer like drunk. And My favorite stories are about football. like the cigarettes, like just the cigarettes and the <laughs> drinking, and like because the NBA actually has really good stories about those. That's when you know pro like culture is actually more fun um, mm. <clears throat> than the the college stuff because everything else like college is just a bit more fun. The thing about the pro sports that's more fun is what's actually happening in the game. Everything else, yeah. like, yep. if you don't have a college team, just get a college team. Like, you can pick any team, and then you can just become obsessed with it. And it's easy to become obsessed with it because you're you can assimilate with this community whose like whole life mm-hmm. revolves around this. Like, I have seasonal depression. Do I have seasonal depression when Louisville basketball is doing well? Not usually. So you this year it just hit a, a little bit yeah, harder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Listen, last year I, I, I get it. Um, no, it's really the you can also kind of like just decide your expectations. Yeah. Because it's like Kentucky football. I'm you just won ten games again. I'm thrilled. Like there are yeah, people that don't be. watch college football as people like oh if you're not playing in the playoff it doesn't matter. Disagree. So you could just set your own expectations. It's yeah. The playoff not is not for like maybe like four schools. The playoff is like if you didn't make it in, it's such a big disappointment right. for everyone Definitely. else. It's like I literally could never in my lifetime see Louisville making the top four like ever in my lifetime. Same. I just don't think it'll ever happen. But not I'm not mad about it. I just don't like the fact that UC made it this year blew my mind. Absolutely yeah. blew my like, mind. I kept they looking at their schedule and who they a hundred percent. That was that game was like they just couldn't string two good things together. It's Alabama, man. Like that's just that's literally what they do. Yeah. There's no shame in that. Uh, yeah. You, know, you guys you don't won, have a right? Team. You came back and won. Yeah. Who'd you play? Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. Yeah. My uncle was watching that. I was um, helping my aunt take down the. Wait, was this before Christmas? No, maybe we were adding decorations. I don't know it what was it was. New Year's. Okay, yeah, we were taking it down, and I just kept hearing him. Damn it! <laughs> He's a Kentucky fan, I'm guessing. No, when when I was messing up. Oh, uh, I was probably a lot. We're of Louisville fans. We're anti. We're we're fans of Louisville and anyone who's playing Kentucky. You know That's how it goes. <laughs> gotta have some haters. Just how it goes. But gotta anyway, okay. Haters. Now I will actually let you go since you told a uh, story. Billy Gillespie story. Thank you for being on this. 